We're about to show you the scenes that may be graphic and dis disturbing to some young viewers. Uh, the footage captured by a Houthi rebel-backed group and obtained by CNN provides a rare glimpse into the strategic port city that is at the epicenter of Yemen's civil war. And CNN senior international correspondent Nimel Bagger tells this family's story. An ambulance screeches up to one of the few remaining hospitals in Hodeida. What we're about to show you is incredibly difficult to watch. In the jumble of bodies, a boy in yellow searching for his mother. She's dead. Little bodies are carried in, draped in blood-soaked cloths. Everywhere, shock and blood and death. This man searching for his wife. He finds instead the body of his three-year-old sister, Raq. It's too much to take in. My wife, he asks, in surgery. The baby is fine. A glimmer of hope, but all too quickly lost. My mother, she's dead. Even as the peace talks continued in Sweden between Yemen's warring parties, the US-backed Saudi-led coalition and Iran-backed Houthi rebels, so too did the violence on the ground. This footage was sent to CNN by the Houthi rebel-backed Ansar Allah media. Eyewitnesses tell CNN the members of this family were killed during an artillery strike under coalition air cover. A charge the coalition denies, saying the Houthis continue to target civilians in Hodeida. This is just a glimpse into what it's like almost every night in this besieged city. In spite of US government promises in October to deliver a ceasefire within 30 days, that month has long since passed. Much of what was filmed here so graphic we're not going to show it in full. Outside, two little lifeless bodies side by side, waiting for loved ones to claim them. This man lists a litany of loss, his daughter and her son, his other daughter and her husband. It's too much. Inside, the boy in yellow finally finds his sister as he comforts her. Other children are carried out. There's just no more room at this hospital. Outside, his grandmother begins to wail, and he attempts to comfort her. It's all too much. And Nima is with me now. Oof. Um, in the aftermath of the attack, has the coalition responded? Uh, it has. Uh, I just want to be clear that we uh, verified what you saw in that report with eyewitnesses on the ground, and we made that clear to the coalition. They told us, though, that they deny any um, they deny any involvement with the attack that you saw the aftermath of there. They say that it is widely recognized that Houthi militias are using artillery and other weapons against civilians in Hodeida and cities around Yemen, Brooke. The port city there that you featured, it's considered this lifeline. It's where 70 percent of foreign humanitarian aid comes into the country. How crucial is this fragile ceasefire that was just agreed to? Incredibly, incredibly crucial. And we have to be clear, it is a glimmer of hope. But we also um, shouldn't presume that, it, that now people's lives are, have changed. People's reality on the ground has not changed and will not change for weeks. That's how long it's going to take for the withdrawal from Hodeida. And even this ceasefire is limited to very specific cities. There is no block on aerial bombardment, which has killed many of the 60,000 Yemenis that have died since January 2016. There is no block on, on the Saudi-led coalition's aerial bombardment across vast swathes of this country. So many of the people that we're speaking to on the ground, Brooke, say that their hope is still with the Senate, with U.S. lawmakers. They believe that it is U.S. pressure and international pressure, but specifically U.S. pressure, that has brought the Saudi-led coalition and the government that it supports to this place. And they're hoping, they're desperate, that that pressure should continue. 